Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our Tropical Magic box. Now our recipient is Bentley. He was born with a severe heart defect and he's actually on the heart transplant list. He's had multiple surgeries and he has to spend a lot of time um, in the hospital. So I thought we can send him a little bit of love, a little bit of tropical magic. So we are going to be doing our tropical trees project, just smaller scale. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. ah. <laughs> we have Keenan here who is working the cameras. Keenan, thank you for being here. Thank you for the invite. And so uh, let's get started. Ready? Yes. Okay. So essentially I'm going to take this project and I'm just going to switch it up a little bit where I'm going to do just small trees. I'm going to take out the large trees in the foreground and just do the small trees. Um, I just feel like this is such a gorgeous little colorful postcard that he would really enjoy looking at. Yeah. It would be pretty. Maybe it can transport him to a nice yeah. beach land for him yes. to dream about. Okay. So I have my colors here. Um, I am using lemon yellow pink, magenta, and azure blue. You can use whatever colors you have on your palette. Also, I wanna say that you can paint anything that you want for this postcard. So if these tropical trees, you don't, you wanna paint something else for Bentley, go ahead. This is your postcard, this is your project. You can send some love some other way if you would like. Okay, so I'm gonna start by getting my, I am using a, uh, what size is this? Three quarter inch wash. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lemon yellow I'm just on the base of the postcard after I taped it down. I'm just gonna do a nice light yellow wash. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab some water, keep that wash going till it's barely their color. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of pink, mix that with my yellow so it's a nice peach color and introduce that on top. Okay. And now I'm gonna do just pink that goes over the peach and I'm just working the three quarter inch wash brush back and forth trying to get smooth transitions here. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of magenta and if you want a little bit of purple at the top I'm going to mix a little bit azure with my magenta to get kind of a gorgeous purpley color. Mm. And see that rough texture? That means there's not enough water on my brush, so I'm just going to dip it in my water. Ah, nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. And work that, work that down. Now you want to be careful once you introduce the purple, because purple and yellow mixed together will make brown. So if you're moving your paintbrush down, only go to the pink. Don't go all the way down because you'll, you will actually desaturate your yellow because now you have purple on your brush. Now I'm going to do one more layer here on this bottom because I want it to be nice and bright and yellow. So if you want to like leave that the light wash that it is, you can just let that dry. I want to make mine a little bit more saturated so I'm going to do another layer of wash. So basically, I'm just repeating the same steps. I really like that purple. Isn't that good? And I just want, I love how on this reference there's like that little hint of more blue purple in the top. So I'm just going to add that. Just a little bit of it. It doesn't have to take over. Just a hint. Oh, and it'll kind of move around a little bit on its yeah. own too. Yeah. Just a little peek of how that sky is changing. Okay, just wait for it to dry now. Okay, our painting is dry now and we will now put in our palm trees. So I'm going to mix a dark value. 
I don't have black as one of my colors, but that's okay. You can always mix a color. So I'm gonna just start with some magenta. I'm gonna start with some blue. Ooh, I got this really gorgeous purpley color. I'm gonna add yellow in there. And our goal here is not to mix a perfect black. Our goal here is to mix a dark enough value that it's going to appear black next to the colors that we have here. Mm. And this is what's super interesting about painting is it's never necessarily about the hue or the value. It's more like, I guess it's more how the colors respond and react to each other instead of what they actually are. Does that make sense? Yeah, like almost the contrast between them. Yeah, so like this is a pretty light value background that I have going on. So this like, even though this color is actually probably more a dark purple, bluish purple. Mm, that's a pretty color. It's going to appear black. I, I'm saying this, I hope it does. Wouldn't it be so embarrassing if I put it on there like- it's Like bright red. <laughs> it's just vibrant purple. Sarah, are you okay? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take my round two. I'm gonna grab this dark value that I mixed. If you have black and you just wanna use black, you totally can do that. Um, and then I'm just gonna put in my palm trees. But I'm gonna do them all small. I'm just kinda, there's one. And we'll have one over here. And we'll have one here. And you can make their trunks a little bit crooked. Notice the spacing between them. Notice how tall they are, switch it up. And then let's start putting in some our little fronds. Sarah, when it comes to color mixing, yeah, was it, I assume initially, it was somewhat difficult for you to get certain colors. I assume that because it is for me, and I hope that that is the case for everyone, but mm -hmm. is there any way that, or has there been anything since you've been painting that you discovered was the easiest way for you to remember or figure out a color? Or has it just been with time you're like, okay, let's think about the color wheel, that sort of thing. Because I feel like color mixing is a tough, I can mean, be tough. For, it's definitely hard for me. Color mixing and color theory in general is a beast. Like you can take a class on color mixing and color theory alone, like an entire college course. Wow. So like there's so much to it. Um, I would say, uh, I don't know if I ever had this like aha moment in like art school or something where I'm like, oh, if I would have known this, like that makes everything so easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Honestly, I think it has been me painting so much and teaching is how I really have gotten more comfortable with color mixing and can understand it. I'm to the point now where I can look at swatches of colors and I know what colors I can mix with those wow but i i credit that to this like and it it's simply because i mean we're going on year how long have i been doing this well since the beginning of 2018. yeah so at least a new project every week at the very minimum for three plus years yep. um, with a limited color palette because we use the same colors um so i think just putting the time in and you know um and three years relatively speaking is not that long yeah to get that skill built up and like sorry i'm not talking about our palm trees if you need help on how to draw these palm trees in our tropical trees tutorial i go over separately how to do palm trees and the fronds and my process so um, please feel free to refer to that if you need a little extra help on your trees um, but I know that there are a lot of artists who, um, for them really love doing like swatches. I, I have done a tutorial on how to do like a color mixing chart and they use that, they reference that personally, just how I am as an artist, I really do not find any joy <laughs> in doing those. I feel like they're a lot of work. Um, and also I'm the type of teacher that I like you guys to have to kind of do it the hard way, not because, um, I mean, maybe I'm lazy, but maybe, <laughs> <laughs> <No ads. laughs> but for me, it's more like, 
that's how I learned. I learned by just doing it. I just learned, I didn't swatch out everything and did a million color mixing charts. I learned by just painting and just having to problem solve as I go. And so like, that's why when we're, you know, mixing colors for projects, I'm like, okay, this is too green. Now let's add red, or this is too purple. Let's add yellow, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm just talking out loud how I would solve these color mixing problems. So you guys can do that on your own and hopefully that will help something click in you. But if you work with the same color palette so much, so often, you will get to a place uh, of complete comfort with color mixing. I mean, it's just bound to happen. Sure. And do I think that you have to make a project every week or paint a project every week for uh, years to get here? No. That's just how, I think that's, for me, that's how I learned. Yeah, learn, different learning styles. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a learner by doing it. Like, you can show me charts all day long. I can read books all day long. I have to actually be painting and doing it myself. I learn by watching. The problem with learning by watching is your motor skills don't learn anything. Mm. So I also have to, like, for this sort of thing, I have to practice. Yeah. Sports, on the other hand, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> and don't get too hard on yourself if your trees look a little bit wonky. I mean, somewhere in nature, there is a palm tree that looks like this. You know what I mean? Like, yes. that's the amazing thing about nature. I actually, I saw something about nature and ourselves that I thought was really uh, wonderful. It was saying how, um, and I think that this applies to art. It was saying how in nature, when we see something that's different, we celebrate it. Like when we come across a flower that's a different color than what we've seen, if we see a tree that's weird shaped, if we see leaves that have a funky pattern on it or like um, little textures. We're like, whoa, look at this. This is different. This is beautiful. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we're, we don't view ourselves that way. And we also don't view the artwork that we make that way. Where in our minds, we have this idea of how things should be. We're like, this is the standard. This is what is socially acceptable. Even if that's our own bodies, even if that's the art that we make, we're like, this is how it has to be. And if it doesn't meet that, we are down on it, or mm -hmm. we judge it, or we're like, this is ugly, this isn't perfect, this isn't beautiful. However, we don't do that in nature. We celebrate the differences that nature brings, and nature has a variety. Like, there's so many differences, and we love to see the differences. We love to see what makes it unique and special, and it's not bad. You know, we celebrate it. Totally. And um, I think that if we can, like, approach that with our art and ourselves, where it's just like, yeah, this this color is different than what we would see instead of being like, well, that's not really realistic. You know what I mean? We can be like, that's really awesome yeah. that you did that. You came up with that on your own. That's creativity. That's beautiful. So like, I love, I think that's why I have such a, uh, I love drawing, I love painting nature and landscapes particularly because um, there's so much celebration in the differences. And I think that that's such a, wonderful attitude that we can have towards our own art where if you're painting this postcard with me and it does not look like this celebrate that celebrate it and i know that we're all learning and that's okay but learning doesn't mean that you have to copy and paste i'm just trying to show you techniques and tools so you can make something totally different than what i'm making right now and so i hope that as you're on this journey of learning of trying something new that you're kind to yourself and that whatever you make you celebrate it for why it is different and even if you notice those differences and learn from it and take that into your next painting that's successful even if you don't think your painting is a success so um Let's untape it, because that's super satisfying. That is very satisfying. I am using the um, Holbein soft tape. I'm using the back of this paper. Look how much that ripped. But my postcard's safe, so we're good. Mm. 
There is a little bit of bleeding here, which is kind of rare for this tape. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. That's a difference. That is a difference. We're going to celebrate that. Look at that. Okay. Celebrate your differences. <laughs> that was good, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our postcard that we are going to send to Bentley. So, Bentley, I hope that this brings you joy. I hope that you guys take the time to do this. If you're not familiar with our Let's Make Art Matter concept, essentially in every box there is a pre-stamped um, pre-addressed postcard, watercolor postcard that you can paint and just drop in the mail directly. And for the Tropical Magic, it's going to Bentley. The whole point is just to bring joy through art. That's, that's the whole point. And I truly believe that community matters. I believe that people matter. I believe that kindness and sharing in this human experience matters more than anything. And I think that if we are able to recognize the humanity within each other and recognize and validate the experiences of each other, it's just a kinder place to be, you know? And so when people are feeling and experiencing hardships or pain, um, we can show support and love, even if we don't have the perfect words. Sometimes it's just taking time out to paint a picture to say, I'm thinking about you. And uh, I hope this brings you joy, you know? Yeah. So um, please take the time to do this for Bentley. And um, I, I hope they enjoy getting them. And um, oh, one final thing that I wanna say, because this is a watercolor postcard and uh, it is going in the mail it could get damaged. So we started carrying, I don't have it, Dorland's wax medium. Oh yes. You can wax. So when this dries, you just take the wax with the paper towel, rub it over your painting and it will protect it. So it won't smear or get wet in the mail. What? Yeah, I've tried it. It's Great. magic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can seal your paintings that way. Spray, you can also seal your paintings with a spray. Like there's varnishes that you can put over. Personally, I don't do very well with sprays. That stuff I gets everywhere. I tend to get it everywhere. I'm just not good with it. Some people are. I'm not one of those people. It's very intimidating to me. But the wax you just rub on yourself, and it doesn't smear the painting, which I for sure thought that if I rubbed something yeah. on this, it would smear it, even if it was dry, and it didn't. So for me, I felt way more comfortable finishing my paintings and putting um, that sealer on it with that um, Dorland's wax. So. That's an option for you guys if you're interested in keeping your postcards safe in the mail. Um, if there's anyone that you would like to nominate for our Let's Make Art Matter, we do have a spot on our website. Just go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom, and there's a nominate button there. And um, grab a friend, grab some family, get some paints out, paint a postcard, and send some love today. It really does make a difference. Um, I think that's all I gotta say. Thank you guys so much for painting with me, and I'll see you later. Bye.